Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so I'm filming this video probably in two, maybe three parts. Technically, we haven't been given the prompt for the 12th, the last one. And by the time this video is pieced together over probably a week and a half, we will know the prompt for the 12th one. Does that make sense? So we've all been working on our snow globes, which I'm finishing, have finished, and that's the piece there. I'll just zoom in. So we did the weaving of the background and then I stitched in the uh, reindeer, added the decorative piece at the bottom, some lace motifs, embellished them with some beads and then just to really make my eye think this is actually a snow globe, I just put some snow in around the place. It looks like you're shaking the globe and there's bits piled up in the corner with little bits hanging. It just wasn't coming together until I actually did that. So I'm pretty pleased with the way it is now. I did some decorative stitches, like there's a feather stitch here. Uh, sorry, a fly stitch. Another one there. I did some just random stitches here on this edge, just um, like a blanket stitch, but not quite a blanket stitch, just an overcast. And there and there, just to sort of add a little bit more texture to the background. In addition, to match this gold and to drag the gold through the whole piece, I did some extra lines of gold stitching, if you can see them there, like I did with the crochet cotton, just some straight lines randomly with the gold thread. And then the gold thread was also used in the center of the flowers, it just sort of helped bring the whole piece together. I even couched over that cord, which was just um, like a twine, but in a calico color with the gold thread and it just sort of helped bring it all together. Everything looked like it was bits doing their own thing until I did the wash of the gold thread. The thread I've used was DMC um, gold thread. I've got it in a few colors. I must say when I first used it, I hated it. And then it sat for probably six months, but I've pulled it out in this project and I've just got used to it. It frays and it twists apart, but you just got to pop it in your needle, be precise with your stitches, and then, um, yeah, have a, have a play. So I'm waiting now for the prompt, the last one. And technically, I still have a second snow globe to do in my red book, but I've decided not to because I just don't have an image that really makes me feel like that is a, um, let me go back up, is somewhere I want to um, be with this particular red journal. So I'll just secure this back together. I'm pretty sure I showed you what I did on this. I'm getting a bit lost in all my videos and what's done and what's not. But the cover, the wrap is completed technically. I haven't put a lining on the inside yet because I, there's my J because I just want to see maybe something will come up that I want to stitch on. And if that lining is in there, well, then, you know, it's a bit hard to stitch. So what I want to do in this video is I want to play with weaving again. I really enjoyed the weaving for that last one. So I thought I'm going to set myself up with a another background done. As I said, I don't really want to do another snow globe. So I'm going to wait for the next prompt. If the prompt doesn't suit this, I actually have three empty pages somehow in my journal. I think it's just the way that the doilies all came together in it. So this could be just a random prompt from previous weeks that I bring back in because I do have on this panel nothing that really suits a snow globe, but there's a couple pieces, for example, those birds, I think are just gorgeous. And I could see them in my red book. That there is gorgeous. I could, hello fudge, I could see that in my red book. And then there's this envelope down here. I could see that, all of which are prompts that we've done previously. And because I've got three pages, one will be the 12th prompt, which I don't know yet filming this video. By the end of this video, I might. 
um, and then I've still got room for two more pages. So I just have a feeling I'm going to have a play with some additional prompts from back in the season that I might do again. Like I love bird prompts. I, I yeah, I, I don't know. But what I want to do is at least get my background ready. So I've started cutting my strips. My base is underneath. And I was just making sure that this guy, because he's in the middle, is sort of where I want to start and work out to the edge because you can easily pull back your strips and slide in your next piece. But before I get too far ahead of myself, and then I thought, oh, I'll turn the camera on. We'll film this. I don't know how long it'll take to film, whether we do the whole time and then the episode's done and then we deal with what goes on it in the next video. I'm not sure. So in the meantime, I'm just going to stop talking and I'm going to bring that camera in just a bit more. So if you did want to do some weaving for a background, that's what I'm planning to do. Now, um, so what I was doing when I did turn on my camera is just piecing these roughly so I know that my distance is correct. Okay, so it is, so they're spare. Now I just need to find another piece of fabric that we could bring in. Tempted to do him. He was one of my favorites. What do I do this one? I don't know. I sort of like the red. Like I just want to bomb it with red. Does that make sense? So I just fold my strip because I don't need the whole work out a rough distance. I really enjoyed doing this piece, the background for the snow globe. I did weaving, oh, I think on a tag in the Ann Brooks project. I think weaving was one of the backgrounds. Yeah, I'm positive it was. And then I think I did weaving on a piece just randomly in a, um, a journal. Oh, I like how that's going to sit. See that there? I'm going to tuck that under there. Gee, that couldn't have fallen any better. That there and that there. So then I can embroider that and I can embroider that. Yep. Do I want to bring that one over? Let's just have a little look. No. Oh, I don't mind it. No, I will leave it like that. Yep, happy with that. Um, wonder if this one could sneak, sneak in. I'm sort of thinking it, that something might go here in the middle. So to waste a piece that has the potential of embroidery might not be the smartest thing. Um, could probably do with some plain fabric just to break it up a little bit. So I'm just looking in my scrap bucket of calico. Yep. And tearing. I might um, maybe slip that one into there. Just adds a little bit of interest. You can really, really muck around with these. I don't like how that's the same. Right there. Yeah. 
Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Why don't I like it? What's... It should technically be that. Yeah. I don't mind that. What if I hide all of that and that then gives me a location for something, like a word or something? I'm going to leave it at that for now. Actually, maybe I run some lace through there. Where's my lace bucket? Let me grab that. I need something. Maybe this will help. Won't feel so plain. And then maybe I can do some beading along it. I don't know. Let's just snip it because it's going to go there. I like the effect of that cream lace on, on the piece. So what I might do is grab my pins and I'm going to just start securing this down. Where's that? Do I bring that up? gonna pin it like that I seriously you could fiddle with this for hours and I think what makes it really interesting if you instead of going over and under over and under on everything you skip a few it just seems to give it more of an interest and it doesn't look so much like a basket So I'm just now securing all the pieces. And like before, I'll run some running stitch through, some camphor stitch, just to get that base to be one. And then really start looking at different ways to embellish the squares or a section, or I lay on top something. So... Okay, now another piece of fabric. So what have we got? I've lost me bits. See, I've still got some words around too. Ponsettia, evergreen, cedar. Oh, I love that fabric. But it hasn't really been in that project. This project could just keep going. I just love the colours. Do we bring that in again? I do have a bit of this left from, I could only get the one spot. I'm thinking I'm gonna bring that guy in. So we're going to um, lift him and lift him. It won't matter that that crosses over there because that gives me an opportunity to put an embellishment there without worrying about losing a particular print of fabric. Yeah, I like that. Where's my pins? I'm trying not to overthink this too much. And being that I don't know the next prompt, may be of a concern for the design element having said that like I've got three pages so I've technically got the snow globe that's not going to happen in red and I've got the last prompt plus a spare so I guess this could just be a spare and there's so many prompts from earlier in the season that we could revisit like birds and um scenes and the envelope the you know i didn't do any of the little extra activities tags and clusters and tabs and oh there's so much so i'm pretty confident i'll come up with something for this piece i think maybe even the piece is just all about the weaving 
Wouldn't that be nice woven in there? Hmm. It's just the thought. Do we bring this guy in again? So if we're going to weave, we would have that up, that up, and that up. So this was an interesting little piece because I haven't used it anywhere in any of the blocks because the design just didn't fit. But being that the bands of artwork on this do work, I don't mind it. I'm just wondering if I should be putting a calico one through because if that gets covered, it'd be a waste because I can stitch and bead there. I don't know. I don't even know what the image is going to be. So how can I plan? Just focus on the back and the rest will fall into place, Corinne. Yeah, I like that. We'll keep that one tradition. And then we might follow the system we had earlier where we have that piece of lace going through as a, a sister treatment to... Yep. So I'm guessing you're probably watching this on the Saturday after the snow globe. Which, what's today's date? The 3rd. Um, so the 10th. You'll be watching this. And I'm actually away in Melbourne at a friend's Christmas party. So we've decided to spoil ourselves and go for the weekend and um, visit our mates in Melbourne. They come up here regularly because she has family in Brisbane and Toowoomba. And then when they announce their Christmas party, after the year we've had, we said, bugger it, let's go. So I will be in Melbourne. Okay, I'm liking that. Yeah. So the last piece will be this guy. So that little tuck doesn't quite work with that imagery there. So I might make that a long piece. Or do I spin it around? Yeah, I'm going to spin that around. So that will be under there. Then I can embroider that there. That can go under because that's not real interesting. And that can go under because that's not real interesting, but that's got a bit of fun about it. I like, I like that. Okay, so let's get that pinned how are we going for time 20 minutes let me have a look at this calendar so we've got the 10th of december so you would see that on the 10th and then there's the 17th and then we've got Christmas Eve so the 17th plus the Sundays yeah I've got plenty of time I'm just going to keep going on this background I'm not going to worry about the fact that I don't know that last prompt I'm just going to work on my background because there is so much work that can go into these types of pieces embellishing wise and I guess if we get to this end of the video and I just want to make a decision on what our element is, which I'm sort of thinking I might, it'll help me work out what goes where. Okay, so what I need to do now is spin it around because it sits in my book like that. I might just bring the camera up, guys. 
so you could get that sort of look and I'm just going to trim it be trimmed a little bit more but we'll allow a little bit, bit of wriggle room for pins and needlework to sort of pull and twist it the piece and there's my oven beeping because I'm cooking meals again for my dad so I've got a few things in the oven so I'm going to just jump up Check those dishes and make sure that everything is going okay in the oven. All right, I'm just going to pause the video for a second and I will be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm just now looking at this piece lengthways and I think I need to bring another piece of lace, you know, through this way. This side has a lot of this. So I'm thinking I can tuck in maybe under there. And come through with this lace. It doesn't have to be on the calico. It'll just create a slightly different look. And help sort of blend it all together. Pin it in and see. So do we, I think we go right through over all of that. So I've got enough of these little guys over here to do something with them. So I'm not too worried that that gets covered. And I guess we could always, because it's a layered thing, I need some more calico just to try something. I don't need a big piece. What I could do is make that look like it's coming in behind there and that's coming up through there. That looks complex. Yeah, I like that. That looks a little random. Random is good. So let's just pin these now. Okay, yeah, so we've got a decorative beading opportunity here and here. We've got lace sneaking through two and then that up there, plus it's a layover, so that sort of looks a little interesting. Okay, I've got a yo yo here pinned, that was nearly into my hand. Some random yo yos. Okay, so now what I might do is a little bit of camphor stitch through. I wonder if I can see. I like to give myself some lines because then I don't have to think too much. Once you get a couple at least sketched in, you, you sort of just have a guide within an inch of it. And it's quite easy to, you know, pick, pick your line. So I did this before on the other one. I don't know if I'll see these lines real well. So let's have a little play with that. Get my needle. And I will do two lengths. And then find my D 
just wondering about where I start because I'm overhanging, but I know my piece. Let's just check something. I know my piece is a little small, the base. So I just want to grab the journal and just double check my sizing. Where's an empty page? Here it is. It's going to go near these birds. Okay, so I could use the background of the page to build it out. I think that's, I think that's okay. And I like how the colour peeks through there a little, so that's okay. I can always lay in there, let's say I want to pad it out. I can always stitch underneath the panel, not this lace, but a lace similar to build out that side if we want to, you know, build up on something, which I sort of do like that. That's like even more interesting. So decision is I won't be trimming that back anymore because I've got plenty of room and I need every bit of it. Um, now, that, that letter, I've cut it out and I'm thinking that is going to be my piece that will eventually position in here somewhere, but I'm not 100% sure. I've cut it out anyway, put it to one side because the other thing I was thinking just then as I was flipping through is things like these letters and that. They can be randomly stitched onto the pages where I've got my doilies because I do want to put a pop of Christmas on my doily pages. So there's heaps of opportunities coming forth with these pages that I can keep embellishing and just pop little elements like, well, let's treat these like a fussy cut we've just cut out of paper and we decorate our Christmas journal. So I could use a lot of these little things for that. So there's an activity just there, just stitching in little fussy cut bits and pieces. That's the treatment I want to do to the holly that's on this weaving, where I do seed stitch and beads, as it sort of is right through the whole book. Oh, I've lost the stitching. I've lost it. It's in here still. <laughs> Goodness me. Okay. All right, let's have another look at this. Now, where were we? We were going to do some camphor stitch. And we can go right to the very edge because I'll probably end up padding that side out anyway due to the background being a little small. I guess another thing is if I just keep embellishing this and not worry about a feature piece is another thing we could do because each little square could be a small little design. Like there's just the opportunities with weaving. This will be good. I'm happy with this. We seem to bring weaving in somewhere. Just find it quite rewarding. Layering all the different, which sort of, I don't know, I'm still trying to work out how I'm going to present the volume three, which is the garden prompts for the next, um, you know, 2023 Roxy Creation Volume 3. I think, what is it? Down, down the Garden Path? I'm still trying to work out how I'm going to present that. And weaving the background would make a, a great background to a big piece. And then the flowers and the appliques and whatever else comes along. 
those stitches are just too small. I know I'm probably being finicky, but I've got time. I might as well change it. Yeah, the the background. Imagine a a big long panel that gets wound onto a bobbin, and then the whole background is woven fabrics, even neutral fabrics, just different ones, all stitched down, canvas stitched, decorative stitches. And then on top of that, you embellish again. That would be a very interesting wall piece or wound onto a bobbin. I just don't know. I've got too many ideas going around in my head. I'm still tossing up doing, making a bag out of my embroidery. So that is a case of finding a pattern for a bag like a, a project bag and then as we work through the six months um, doing all the different prompts some of the panels for the bag would be the background so for example I spotted a backpack pa pattern a backpack pattern that I've got in my cupboard now if I was to cut that pattern out say in calico and then I'd have three four five whatever pieces to make the backpack then as the the months roll through with the Roxy program each little prompt would be somewhere on that backpack panels so the pattern pieces and then right at the very end you stitch your backpack together and all of that embroidery would be on the backpack. What a gorgeous gift for a, a friend or a young person. I don't think I need a backpack, but having said that, a backpack to put your needlework in, well, that would be handy. So that's sort of one idea that's floating around in my head. The other idea is to make a bear or a giraffe or I don't know I've been thinking about different animals an elephant I'd have to find a pattern somewhere and embroider embroider the leg and the arm and the head and the belly and the back all those pieces and then at the end of the six months it comes together into something so that's sort of where my head's at the moment with it. Another journal would be nice. Like journals are great because then if you want to take your piece and flip through it, you can. Do I really need a giraffe or a elephant sitting in my craft room looking at me? Probably not. A backpack, probably. I know there's um, some patterns there that are sewing caddies where if you were going somewhere you could fill it up with your project. That's probably a sensible, sensible way to go. Now I'm just going to run that stitch. I might use invisible stitch there. Seems a shame to waste. Let's let's run one down this outer edge. Just a few little lines just to catch my eye as I scoot down that edge. A bit skew whiff. So yeah, as for the next project, I'm still thinking. Something will present itself. Got a few weeks to think about it yet. I think I mentioned in the last video that I was looking for bag patterns or something that's 
useful that it could feature on. But one thing to consider is when you do something like that, your beautiful embroidery is getting bumped around in the daily, daily thing that is life. So I guess if you don't want it to get the grime of life on it, a bag's probably a silly idea. So these are all the things that go through my head as I try and work out what I'm going to do with it. You watch, I'll end up just putting it onto a reel. I do have quite a few um, reels with that type of work on them. Not a scene like a garden, like there's a, actually a bit of logic to it. More of a crazy anything goes type of piece. And they are beautiful. I love just having them around. So I might end up still doing that. I do have quite a big reel somewhere that is huge. And I think you'd probably need something that's got a little bit of space. I've got lots and lots of little ones with, you know, that hold snippets. And when I zigzag a heap of calico together to use as trims on journal pages, I sort of store them on those reels. I'm pretty sure I have a really big guy somewhere. Maybe I need to get my hands on that. It's in the cupboard down in the back. Get my hands on that and maybe that will convince me, yes, just do the real and forget about all these other crazy ideas. I don't know. We've got time. Like I said, the prompt hasn't yet been revealed for this last week. Having said that, when you're watching this video, you will know what the prompt is because this video is being filmed prior to it being revealed. So it'll be a little odd, but that's okay. I'll have a little look at how much time I've spent here doing this background. And if there's time, I might join a bit to the end and say, okay, we now know the prompt. I think that's probably what will happen. Then we can make some final decisions on how this piece is going to go. And I can then come back and show you all in this video, all of the stitching that I've done to secure it. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and... Um, keep working on securing the background down and then when I come back probably be a week has gone by I can then um, we can work out where we go with this piece or how we use it and what we use it for okay everyone I will see you all in the next video bye good for morning now. everyone how are you all it is this last part of the video as I thought might happen um, we would find out our prompt on the Wednesday and I'd have a chance to add on to this video which was all about the weaving of the background um, something for this piece. I have done a little bit of stitching but I didn't want to go too crazy because I, I didn't know what was going to go on here because we hadn't yet got the prompt when I started filming and stitching this background. Now that I know that we have pretty much whatever we want to add to our journal, say some missing um, subjects or some pieces we'd like to redo or whatever. So we've got lots of freedom. And in my red book, I've actually got three panels that I can work with. And of course, I've still got my panel in my bunting. My bunting one, I'm going to do a nativity. So that'll finish off the bunting nicely. And in my red book, this piece is going to be an angel. So I went back to my books that I pulled out right at the beginning of the project. You know, the books, the ones we buy, have been in our cupboard for years, have never ever done anything with them, them books. And I started flipping through it. Now, there is a Santa in this book down the bottom here that I've been admiring for some time. I just love the layers of those colors. He's possibly going to appear on one of my pages in my uh, red book, but the jury's still out on him. But what I did want to do is have a look at an angel. Now, this angel has, uh, it's a monthly panel. So the snowman is 
um, January. This February Angel caught my eye, but it's more of a design suitable for a page that's going landscape. The page, the weaving page is going portrait. So I kept going. Um, couldn't really see anything. There's a great rabbit. Yeah, I just was struggling to come up with one that suited until I got to the very last page and I found her, this little one. So, and I like the idea that she's got a frilled little uh, underskirt, which I think I can have a really good play with. Her little um, dress is pretty simple, so we can do all sorts and I can do something with the wings. So that's my girl. My little angel is coming on to this one. So what I did was I, using some baking paper, I traced around her dress. I figured that's probably about all I need and went to place it on my piece here. And it was just too small. She's overpowered because the background's so bold. So what I ended up doing is when I chose my fabric, which is like a, um, um, a hemp, a really old hemp that I think I got from one of Rachel's packs that I bought, I just sketched a little bit bigger around her so that my dress just enlarged a little bit. And I think that's made all the difference. So I've got my little dress, I went and just used some calico to get her little face. And then it's just a case of cutting out her little feet and her little uh, hands. So pretty simple. I think she's going to be able to hold her own on the piece. So it's now just a case of um, invisible stitch it down and then um, start thinking about what I can use as the trim. Now I've had this old uh, handkerchief sitting on my desk for most of the last you know, six months and I really love this on the edge. So I'm thinking I'm going to actually remove a piece of this, like take that off the corner and stitch it underneath her hemline so that will become her little petticoat out the bottom. So if that makes sense. But in the meantime, so it's gonna, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. So there's not a lot to see here, but I did wanna go through a couple things because I've, I've had a heap of new subscribers, which is just fantastic. I've just spotted another piece of lace that has potential too. Maybe I give her a little apron. So I like this little scallop. So I'm getting sidetracked. Yeah, we're going to give her a little apron as well. Anova. Yeah, oh, you sweet, sweet thing. Let's cut that because that's going to be a no-brainer. I'll be able to really layer up her the texture. So she'll have that gathered up. Yeah, I'm really going off on a tangent. As I was saying, I've had a heap of subscribers and there's been a few reoccurring questions that I thought I might address in this video so that if you are just joining the Stitchery Project or you're very, very new to this whole slow stitch, um, it might be of help to you. The first thing is what type of needles do I prefer? Now, you've probably noticed in the last couple of videos that my needle supply has got a little bit uh, light on because they seem to be disappearing down the couch. And my couch, I can't access them. There's this flap of fabric that pretty much stops them falling through to the floor where I can retrieve them. So all my favorites are disappearing. So, where this is heading is you'll notice here, just off camera, in camera now, see these here? These are my favorite needles. I was in Spotlight yesterday and purchasing a gift for a young lady who has purchased her first sewing machine. Here I go off tangent again. We're heading to Melbourne this weekend, so you'll be watching this Saturday and I'll be in Melbourne attending a Christmas party with some dear friends. Well, in the process, we're catching up with some more friends and dad says, I can't believe it, Corinne. 
my daughter, who is a chemistry girl, physics, science, it's a very smart young lady, she has announced that she is going to buy a sewing machine. So they went out and with her own pocket money and a little bit from mum and dad, she's invested in a Singer sewing machine. How exciting. So dad's absolutely floored by this scenario. So I shot off to Spotlight and I thought, well, we're going to be staying there the night as a little gift to her. I went and purchased her a little sewing basket. Um, she wants to make clothes. So I haven't tempted her yet with this type of stitching. She's, she wants to have a go at making clothes. So I picked up a, a very good pair of dressmaking scissors and I picked up um, tape measure, some pins and a little pin cushion. So if she has those things or she would like to buy them herself, I'll give dad the receipt and she might be able to turn my purchase into um, fabric or something or some patterns. That's another thing she'll need to invest in is patterns to make some clothes. So it's all very exciting. So in the process of yibby yabbering, I have made myself a little apron there just by putting a little gathering stitch there. That's gonna go on there. And then she'll have this peeking out from underneath her skirt. So she'll be quite a textured little girl. I have to work on the position a little bit because she does have some wings. So I'll need to find some fabric that can be her wings. So anyway, oh goodness me, I've only got 20 minutes of this video left. This will just stitch down pretty basically. I think you guys know where I'm heading with all of that. I bought myself some more needles and I thought I might as well show you my sizes. So this one here is a chenille needle size 18. Now the reason I like these guys is it's got a nice big eye. It's nice and thick. So it takes those heavier threads like crochet cotton, makes a great hole through the fabric for the rest of the needle to follow. And if I'm doing a lot of uh, camphor stitch, you know, just background stitching, this is great because it's, it's really good to grip with my fingers. It's not too fine. It takes a decent size thread. It's a good length so I can do a bit of weaving through the fabric. So highly, highly recommend that you invest in this particular size needle. So 18s and some chenille needles. Now these guys, these are darning needles. So they're also designed to be long. The eyes are a little bit smaller, but there's two in the middle of this pack that are my favorite, all time favorite. These little ones here, they're good too. And if I've lost these two, they de definitely would be put into use. Um, these are size one slash five. So there's a mix in here. So number one and number five. So if you are going to invest, this is a definite. If you're going to use thicker um, cottons like uh, wools and crochet cottons, I'd go with these guys. And if you're going to just use normal cotton and some normal crocheting cotton or DMC stranded thread, these guys. So they're my go-to needles. So I figured I might as well show you that. The other thing that I've been asked is all about this invisible stitch. So I just want to go through that quickly. It's, uh, it's hard to explain when you're typing in comments. So I thought, oh, I, I could do a, a minute or two on invisible stitch. Invisible stitch is all about getting rid of pins. So if you've created your piece and there's heaps of pins in it, like I'm doing now, to go and embroider and slow stitch and decorate, pins are a pain in the neck and you will end up just stabbing yourself. So what we're all doing is invisible stitching down all our first layer of elements, whether it be a background or even the angel or some lace, whatever. It's whenever you want to eliminate pins. And what I do is I use a cotton color that is similar to my work. So it could have been red, it could have been uh, cream. Um, if you want to remove it at the end, ignore what I'm saying and you could use purple and you could do big stitches everywhere. They're not invisible and you remove them like you would if you were basting a quilt or um, soft edge applique onto a quilt. We used to do big stitches just to hold it all. 
that's slow stitch, you might as well make the stitch worth it and use it and keep it. So the theory is bring your needle up into your element you're going to stitch down. Now, am I happy with her placement? Before I do this, she's got wings. Have I got room for wings? Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to bring my needle up and I'm going to do the tiniest little stitch. So I'm going to go down pretty much where I was, but I'm going to make sure I just catch a couple threads. Okay, so that now is secure. That's not coming up. Tiny little stitch there. But on the back, I can go wherever. So I'm going to jump over to here. So that's where I was. So I'm going to come a good centimetre, which is going to bring me up on that skirt again and do on the top a tiny little stitch. So that's the invisible bit. Underneath, you can scoot wherever you want because no one's going to see it. But on the top, you've got these itty bitty little stitches just securing your element down, whatever element that may be. So that's what we mean by invisible stitch. I've got to try and remember to explain these little things because we all soldier along in our projects and you know a good portion of you have been with the project since the beginning so you're sort of used to the lingo and you're well and truly doing it yourself these little little stitches but then there's all these newbies that find us and they're like what is she talking about so you can see the distance I'm traveling now. I'm going to do a tiny stitch there and a tiny stitch there, but underneath I'm scooting along a good centimeter. This is the best stitch that I've ever come across for helping you get rid of your pins. So now I can get rid of that guy because the pins bite, let's be honest. Nasty things. I'm not going too close. See, I, my stitch was so invisible. Oh no, it did work. Not going too close to the edge of my work because I need to tuck in under that piece of fabric her, her hands and her toes, her head. So I've got to be a little mindful of what is going to be layered in around her. Having said that, I have in the past when I've gone to add in some extra elements that I had not considered maybe in the first place, you can, there's nothing stopping you snipping that little stitch if it's in your way because you can always add another and the really they're only there just to tack things down. So you've certainly got the freedom that if the little stitch is in your way due to a change in design, there's no reason why you can't give it a snip. So that is done. It's as simple as that. So all my pins are gone and my little dress is held into position. And then we just knot it off on the back. Just a little knot. Okay, 15 minutes. So I've only got 20 minutes and that'll bring us right up to the hour. Now I might just put in place her little head, I think, because it's cut out, it's sitting here and I don't want to lose it. So now the next decision I need to make is how I'm going to secure her little dress. Am I going to just do a running stitch around the edge of the little dress or will I do an overcast stitch? I think I might because it'll stop it from fraying. So I'm just going to do a couple little, there's one of my hairs, we don't want that in there. We're going to do a couple little invisible stitches on her. Just so now that I know what's going on this piece, I can have a really good think about the background. For example, this here, I'd really want to seed stitch through here and then put a few beads in there. So I can do that now because I'm, I'm pretty confident I know where she's going to go. There we go. A couple little stitches and her head. 
is in position. That's great, she won't be lost. Now, I'm pretty confident I'm going to overcast her. So I'm going to continue with this thread. And I'm going to just sneak in there with some stitches. And so when you're watching this video, there won't be much stitching going on because I'll be in Melbourne helping my friend prep for a party. There's 70 people coming. They're so generous. They're just lovely, lovely, lovely people. So we're going down a day early so I can give her a hand and the boys can do whatever the boys do in preparations for parties. But the Sunday, we're heading out to our second lot of friends down there. And I will be sitting around Sunday afternoon, evening, stitching, chatting. So I'm going to take this piece with me. So I've got something to do. And heaven forbid the planes get delayed. A girl's got to have something with her to keep her sane in an airport. So if the planes got delayed, I will have my stitching. I can whip it out <laughs> and stitch. So I'm just coming up the sleeve of this little girl, my little angel. She's going to be perfect because she's not too over the top. She's neutral. So she's not going to overpower the background. So the background's still going to pop which is what I really wanted because I, I'm just featuring this weaving technique. And it would be a shame to go to all that hassle. And that's why I'm just going to use a sewing machine cotton to stitch her down. Because I just don't want to, you know, overpower her. Now, the other thing I need to do is put in some little hands. So we might just... It's pretty simple and they do need to be a little bit bigger than the image. If you recall, I've made things a little bit bigger. So let's just trace a couple little hands. Cut them out. Now I've made them a fraction longer than they need to be because I need to tuck them under her the sleeve of her little dress. Like so. There we go. Can you see that? So while I'm coming along with that overcast stitch, oh, I'll be so good to get get those needles into action. I'm sick of using this beading needle, which has the tiniest of eye on it. And the moment the thread gets a little bit split, I'm just making it harder than I need to. So I'm just going to stitch now along, along this, oh goodness me. Don't rush, Corinne. There's plenty of time. Well, there's not. We've hit the 20 minute mark. Oh, and it's become unthreaded. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop the video because I seriously have run out of time. But you get the general gist. While I'm coming along that edge, I'm going to catch with a couple little invisible stitches her hand. And then I'm also going to stitch around there, work my way right around. And in the process, pop in that little bit of lace that will poke out from her skirt, stitch on her apron, and then have a think about what I use for her little wings as well. So that's my piece, my red work piece. I will show you this finished 
in the next video. And of course, the next video most likely will be the blue bunting. And we will be doing a nativity scene for my bunting. Okay, everyone, have a fantastic week and um, enjoy your stitching. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.